The LA Kings wrap up their season high seven game road trip in Sin City. We talk about that and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us some positive comments wherever you listen to your podcasts, if you could. And we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 18 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Well, the LA Kings finally wrap up their season-long seven-game road trip tonight in Las Vegas. Now, I said going into this trip, I felt if the Kings could get eight points, I would consider it a good trip, a successful trip. Well, through six games, they have those eight points, so tonight they can exceed what I had hoped for their uh, road trip with a big win in Las Vegas against the uh, rival Golden Knights. Um, and we're going to talk more about those Golden Knights coming up. Um, but there is no reason to expect going into tonight's game that we will see a different forward lineup or lineup overall from the LA Kings than we've seen the past two games, two consecutive wins. By the LA Kings, we expect tonight against Vegas to see a top line of Andre Kopitar with Adrian Kempe and Quinton Byfield on the wings, Philip Deneau centering the second line with Trevor Moore and Kevin Fiala, the third line of Alex Turcott centering Alex Laferriere and Warren Fogle, and the fourth line, we think of Trevor Lewis uh, centering Tanner Janot and Andre Lee. Still don't expect to see Akil Thomas. We'll talk about that in a second. And again, no reason to expect the Kings to change their defensive pairings, especially after the last game. They held the Ducks to just 14 shots on goal and a single goal. Uh, it will be Mike Anderson and Vladislav Gabrikov on the top pairing, Joel Edmondson and Brant Clark on the second pairing, and Andreas Englund and Jordan Spence on the third pairing. David Riddick is expected to start in net with Phoenix Copley serving as his backup. Speaking of goaltending, um, Darcy Kemper, of course, is out injured, but day to day and head coach Jim Hiller was asked at practice yesterday before the team left for Las Vegas about an update on Darcy Kemper. And he said, quote, he is making progress, but he is still not there yet. I still haven't talked to him or heard how it went for him, but definitely good to see him out there with the group End quote. So that was Jim Hiller talking about Darcy Kemper back at practice. Um, he hadn't had a chance to get an update on how he felt afterwards or talk to Darcy Kemper, but uh, Darcy Kemper, again, is now practicing with the team. I don't know if he went on the road trip to Vegas. I'm guessing not because why he's not, there's no real reason for him to go. But again, some sort of a minor injury that he's dealing with. They're being cautious about it, um, but it looks like Darcy Kemper could be back as soon as the home opener. Now, he is on injured reserve, but it is retroactive to when he was put on IR, and I do believe he would be eligible to return on Thursday against the Sharks if the Kings would like to do that, and if he's ready to go, I'm sure that uh, that will be the case. I did mention Akil Thomas. Uh, I, I griped a little bit about it, about how I don't understand why Jim Miller hasn't gotten Akil Thomas into the lineup yet, and he was asked about that by friend of the show and LA Kings insider Zach Dooley, and Jim Hiller had this to say, uh, quote, I really wanted to get him, Akil, in on the road trip, get Akil out there, and just, it's kind of a funny trip, the way we played, good, not so good, good, not good, and he never got his chance. He'll be in soon enough, probably not soon enough for him, but soon enough for the team, end quote. Kind of an interesting uh, quote, um, you know, I find it hard to believe that uh, Keel Thomas couldn't capably be put in the lineup in place of Andre Lee. And look, I've been a big Andre Lee supporter, thought he should have made the team, have no issue with him being in the lineup. But I, again, I just don't understand why for a game, Akil Thomas couldn't get a chance to get in there and, and show what he can do. And again, just keep 
him involved in in the team. I mean, six straight games and he's not in the lineup. Again, hard to believe that he couldn't be in the lineup against the Ducks, for example. But Jim Miller says uh, he will get in the lineup at some point soon. Um, so some random thoughts on the LA Kings as they close out this seven game road trip and what we've seen so far. And I will say I've been impressed with how the Kings have handled some adversity so far. Um, first with the injury uh, in the preseason to defenseman Drew Doughty and now the injury of late to goalie Darcy Kemper. Now there were some bumps in the road uh, with the defense dealing with the loss of Drew Doughty, which I think was expected, but I think they've ironed those things out. Uh, and I think once Drew Doughty returns, the Kings defensive group uh, taking on this added responsibility and handling it well, hopefully going forward, will make them better as a group once Drew does, in fact, return. As far as the Kemper injury, uh, again, not serious and also not surprising. David Riddick has filled in capably for Kemper, but still good to see. Um, you know, he filled in last year when Cam Talbot had his issues, did David uh, Riddick and and played well. And I'm not surprised to see him doing well uh, so far filling in for Darcy Kemper, but still good to see him get out there and do it. So we know, unfortunately, going forward, there will be some other injury issues to deal with. It's just the nature of this game. Uh, but so far, so good for the LA Kings dealing with the injury issues and a little bit of adversity. Talk about the defense. Now, without Drew Doughty, who year in and year out is the Kings' top point producer from the blue line, this group of Kings defensemen uh, with offensive uh, stalwarts like Mikey Anderson and Andreas England are the fifth best group in the NHL for scoring. Yeah, I'm, uh, no, the, just let that sink in. Uh, the Kings' defensive group is the fifth best in the NHL in producing points. 16 points from the defense through six games, three goals and 13 assists. And again, that's fifth best in the NHL. Now we're still waiting for Brant Clark to score a goal. Uh, I think that will be coming soon. Would love to see Jordan Spence get one as well. Uh, as for Brant Clark, he's currently tied for fourth on the team in points with four. He's also tied with Andre Kopitar um, with three power play assists to lead the team. Um, but still, the Kings not known, especially other than Drew Doughty, for getting a lot of offense from their defense. Uh, and I would, to be honest, be pretty surprised if at the end of the year, the Kings were a top five scoring group from their defense. But all that said, so far, so good. And it's been nice to see that the Kings defensemen have been chipping in uh, offensively so far. Uh, we had an email or two recently talking about concern with Quentin Byfield, who has three assists and no goals through six games and has been moved, maybe even demoted, ironically, uh, to wing on the top line. We should all be so lucky, right, to uh, be demoted by being moved up uh, in our position as far as the, the lines go. But um, I, I have preached patience with Q, and I'm still optimistic that he's going to be uh, a solid player for the Kings this year and continue to grow and be a player that they will rely on as we go forward. But I will say the next time he scores a goal, which is hopefully soon, I'll be a little bit relieved because yes, he had the breakout year last season, put up a career high 20 goals and 55 points. But if you recall, he did go into a pretty pronounced goal scoring slump late last season. He went 19 games in between goals before finally getting that 20th goal in the regular season finale. And I, you know, there we, we, we were told there were some injury or illness issues as part of the explanation, but I'm a little concerned uh, about the lack of goal scoring from Q. I do have to admit uh, he's still a very young player. Uh, I think there is still the possibility that if he doesn't get a goal soon, it could affect his confidence. Um, the longer this goes on, the more it becomes a thing. He'll start getting asked about it. He'll start thinking about it. So I'm not going to go so far as to say I'm concerned about it at this point, but let's just say I would love to see Q get one in the back of the net here in the next couple of games. How about tonight in Vegas? That would be awesome. Now, I was very excited about Quentin Byfield and Brant Clark coming into the season, and I still am optimistic about how good they're going to be going forward, but it has been very fun to see the two Alexes playing so well, Alex LaFerriere and Alex Turcotte. LaFerriere has got four goals and an assist in six games, including back-to-back -back games 
with game-winning goals. Turcott has a goal and three assists in six games, and that included starting the year on the fourth line. And while I love what Laffey has been doing, uh, hard not to be really excited and happy for Alex Turcott. It has been so good to see his confidence return after so many issues dealing with injuries and him being in and out of the lineup in Ontario. And I'm sure a lot of Kings fans were worried that if would he ever even get a chance to show what kind of NHL player he can be just because of all the bad luck health-wise. Of course, the Kings drafted Turcott fifth overall in the 2019 draft. And at the time, it was the right pick. He was an accomplished player at his age level. He was playing on the U.S. Uh, national under-18 team with guys like Jack Hughes of the Devils, who's turned into a superstar. And he definitely held his own with all those guys. Um, now, he is a bit undersized, but he's always showed a great hockey sense. He's always showed a knack for making the right plays at the right time. I think he's got a good all-around game. But those injuries, it seemed like he might turn into one of those guys who just never got a chance to show what he could do because he couldn't stay healthy. Well, so far, so good for Alex Turcotte. Again, finally getting his chance to show what kind of player he can be and absolutely taking advantage of it. It's been a great story so far, and hopefully it will continue. Coming up, we've got a scouting report on tonight's opponent, the Vegas Golden Knights, and what we want to look for from the LA Kings. That's next here on Locked LA Kings, your team every day. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And of course, FanDuel is there for you to bet on Major League Baseball's postseason. The Dodgers are in the World Series against the Yankees. They're favored by a run and a half in game one Friday in L.A. The over-under is at eight and a half. I take the over in that. Uh, Dodgers are a minus 122 to win it all. You've also got the Lakers opening up the season tonight, hosting the Timberwolves. The Lakers are a one-point underdog. Over-under in that game is 219 and a half. And, of course, our Kings are in Vegas taking on the Golden Knights. L.A. is an underdog. They are getting a goal and a half over under in the game against the Golden Knights is five and a half. Join FanDuel, browse the latest betting odds on your favorite sports and teams in the Sportsbook app and get in on the action. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Before we get into the Kings uh, Golden Knights matchup, you may or may not know this, but today, Tuesday, For the only time this season in the NHL, all 32 teams are in action. We've got 16 games in what's being called the Frozen Frenzy. Uh, The festivities will start at 6 p.m. Eastern time in Philadelphia with the Flyers hosting the Washington Capitals. And then every game after that will be a staggered start. So none of the games tonight are starting at the same time. Uh, It will all culminate at 8 p.m. L.A. time in Las Vegas with the Golden Knights hosting the Kings as they have clearly saved the best for last. So again, the the Kings capping off a big night of hockey in the NHL. As for the Golden Knights, they check in with a record of 3-2-1 for seven points. They're behind the Flames, Kings, and Kraken in the Pacific Division standings. Vegas opened up the season with an 8-4 win over the Avalanche. They beat the Blues 4-3 and then the Ducks 3-1. But since have lost three in a row. They fell 4-2 to the Capitals, 4-3 to the Lightning, and their last game this past Saturday was a 4-3 overtime loss to the defending Stanley Cup champion Florida Panthers. Golden Knights' three wins have all come at home, and their three losses have all been on the road. So the fortress, as they call it in Vegas, has been well protected so far, but of course they'll have to deal with the Kings tonight. Uh, Golden Knights are led by Jack Eichel, who has 10 points and a team-high eight assists. Captain Mark Stone is right behind him with nine points on the season. Vegas' leading goal scorer is Ivan Barbashev with four goals. The Golden Knights definitely driven by their top line of Stone, Eichel, and Barbashev, so the Kings will have to contend with that. Uh, Their depth, the Vegas Golden Knights' depth, definitely took a hit this offseason with the departure of two of their top six forwards. Star Jonathan Marcheseau, an original Golden Knight, went to Nashville, and Chandler Stevenson, left for Seattle. Vegas still has a solid blue line with guys like Noah Hannafin, Alex Petrangelo, and Shea Theodore. Golden Knights also have a few familiar faces to Kings fans. Uh, Alec Martinez is gone off to Chicago, but Vegas still has former Kings defenseman Braden McNabb and former Kings forward and Stanley Cup winner Tanner Pearson 
has joined the team this season. He got a training camp tryout in the preseason, and he made the team. Of course, you might remember he was the one that was tied up with Drew Doughty along the boards that resulted in the Drew Doughty injury, though no fault of Tanner Pearson. That was just a fluke accident. As far as the net for the Golden Knights, their number one goalie is Aiden Hill, um, but he is not going to start tonight against the LA Kings. Word has come down that offseason edition Elias Samsonov is going to get the start against LA. Uh, he was in net for their last game, the overtime loss against Florida. He turned aside 45 of 49 shots in that game, but did take the loss, so he's 0-1 on the season. He's a former Capital and Maple Leaf netminder. In his career, four starts against the Kings. He has a three and one record. As far as injuries for the Golden Knights, they will not have top six forward William Carlson as he is out with an injury. A few numbers to throw at you as far as the Kings versus the Golden Knights. Vegas checks in 12th in the NHL in goals scored per game at 3.5. The Kings are actually sixth in the NHL, believe it or not with 3.83 goals scored per game. Uh, Golden Knights are 19th in the NHL in allowing goals per game. They're allowing 3.33 goals per game. The Kings are 16th, allowing 3.17 goals per game. Golden Knights are tied for 8th in the NHL on the power play. Uh, they are successful 29.4% of the time. The Kings are 19th in the NHL at 17.4% with a man advantage. On the penalty kill, Vegas is 28th in the NHL at 69.2%. The Kings 17th in the NHL on the penalty kill, 76.6%. So how about some keys to victory for the LA Kings in tonight's game? Well, this one you can say almost every game, to be honest with you, but start fast and score the first goal. Kings are taking on a Vegas team that is riding that three-game losing streak but they are undefeated at home, so don't let them start to feel good about things now that they're back on home ice. Get the lead and get them thinking about what's been going on wrong lately. Plus, in their three home wins, the Golden Knights have scored 15 goals, five goals per game. In their road losses, they have scored eight goals. That's uh, less than three per game. So for the Kings to, uh, to hopefully keep this game a little bit low scoring and help themselves by getting off to a good start, uh, if not getting the first goal of the game, at least keeping it scoreless, as we saw in their game against the Ducks. Uh, the number two key to victory for me is keep it close going into the third. The Kings' best period so far this season has been by far the third period. LA has a goal differential in the first period of minus two. The goal differential in the second period is minus three. But in the third period, the Kings are a plus nine in goal differential. And yes, there have been a couple of empty net goals thrown in there. But uh, the Kings, uh, again, have their best period scoring-wise has been the third period, so keep it close. If you can keep it low scoring, go into the third where the Kings have shown that they can pull out the victory. And finally, be even, at least be even in the special teams battle. Golden Knights have a top 10 power play. And while the Kings' penalty kill has been solid, uh, Vegas has a terrible penalty kill, and the Kings' power play has not lacked much or has not had much power to it. So again, keep it close. Uh, if you can't win the special teams battle, at least keep it even. Uh, but do not lose the special teams battle uh, in this game because, again, the Kings probably not doing much on the power play, but the penalty kill has been strong. Vegas has a solid power play. Keep that power play off the board and at least keep things even as far as the special teams go. This is the first of four meetings between the Kings and Golden Knights. Again, an 8 p.m. L.A. time start time as part of that frozen frenzy. Uh, the game will not be broadcast locally uh, on uh, FanDuel Sports, formerly Bally Sports. It is an ESPN, ESPN Plus telecast. So um, if you're going to watch it, you're going to have to watch it on uh, ESPN or ESPN Plus. Uh, you can, of course, listen to the game on ESPN uh, 710, their app. Uh, and because of the late start time, uh, we are hoping to have a recap show available to you Wednesday morning. So uh, keep that in mind. Hey, some uh, national love for the Kings captain. We'll tell you about that next here on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. Hey, no matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. 
And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match Assessments and virtual interviews. Uh, plus, again, you only pay for the quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right, so even though the Kings are obviously a major market team, they don't get as much attention as you might think, especially nationally, and you, you could certainly even argue, argue locally. They're, they don't get as much attention as the the Dodgers or the Lakers, and, and maybe that is deserved in some respect. But always like to point out when a national publication or national broadcast brings attention to the LA Kings or an LA Kings player, uh, there is an article that was written recently that I just found on uh, dailyfaceoff.com. Uh, it's a, a website that I use mostly for my NHL podcast, the puck podcast that I do, but they do a pretty good job of covering the entire NHL. And I did repost this on X and Twitter if you want to check out the article uh, and if you follow us there, which you absolutely should. Uh, but I do think it's it's worth your time. Uh, it was written by somebody named Hunter Crowther. And the title of the article is, quote, it's time to say it, Andre Kopitar is better than Patrice Bergeron, end quote. It's actually a pretty lengthy article, goes into evidence on why the author believes that Kopitar is better than Patrice Bergeron. Might not be too revealing for Kings fans necessarily, but obviously uh, this article wasn't just written for Kings fans. As a matter of fact, you could argue it was actually written for uh, non-Kings fans to talk about how great Andre Kopitar is and how overlooked he is. And I've said it, I don't think it's a controversial opinion, but I think when Andre Kopitar calls it a career, he should be considered the greatest king of all time. Now, nice to see a national publication put it out there, especially for East Coast fans who frankly don't get to see a lot of Andre Kopitar and know what he's all about. Um, and, and maybe as a Kings fan, Maybe you're not familiar who Patrice Bergeron is. Well, let's just say that that headline is making a good statement, which, of course, is the point of a headline. They want you to have a reaction to it and hopefully view the article or click on it. Um, it is a bit of an attention getter, uh, even for me as, as a hockey fan, um, a little bit. Uh, now, Bergeron, if you don't know, first ballot Hall of Famer. He's not in yet, but he will be soon former captain of the Boston Bruins, won the most Selkie trophies in the history of the NHL, six times uh, the Selkie trophy given out to the best defensive forward in the NHL. Now, Bergeron, who retired season before last, um, was, like Andre Kopitar, uh, a real gentleman on and off the ice, a great ambassador for the sport of hockey and beloved in Boston. Um, a lot of East Coast hockey fans, I think, would see that headline and and uh, probably get a reaction because they would say, well, that's ridiculous. Um, but if you actually, and if they actually take the time to read the article, uh, there's certainly good evidence to support the opinion that Andre Kopitar actually was a better player than Patrice Bergeron, and at least deserving of being in the conversation as the best two-way forward of his era, if he's not already there. I think people in the know are not going to be surprised by this. But again, I think it was targeting fans fans of Patrice Bergeron, East Coast hockey fans, Bruins fans, to say, hey, uh, as good as Patrice Bergeron was, and again, first ballot Hall of Famer, uh, Andre Kopitar is right there with him, if not better. So very, very cool to see uh, Andre Kopitar get that respect that I think he definitely deserves nationally. Maybe it'll open some eyes from people who uh, aren't Kings fans across the country. And also, I think a reminder to us as Kings fans to enjoy Kopi while we can now he's got one more year left on his contract after this season at the conclusion of that contract he has not said whether he'll be looking to get an extension or not uh if it were i mean it would be a one or two year contract you would think depending on how he's been he's playing at the time and also i think a lot depends on how much success the kings are having as a team as well i would not be surprised 
if Kobe does a Dustin Brown and doesn't announce anything until late in the final season and then calls it a career, um, Kopitar, um, you know, no longer being an LA King is something I don't think we all want to think about because I certainly appreciate Andre Kopitar so much uh, and will certainly miss him when he's gone. But again, he's not gone yet. Uh, he still has some special moments left in him. We've already seen one of them this year. I think you could certainly say the highlight of the Kings season so far was the opening night hat trick in Buffalo by Andre Kopitar. Uh, hopefully there are still, and I'm sure there are still some special moments in the remaining years that Andre Kopitar has left. But again, uh, appreciate Kopi while we can, and uh, he is deserving of all the attention he absolutely gets. Uh, real quick, I do want to say a quick thank you to everydayer Keith Freeze, who uh, put out a YouTube video that had some very, very nice things to say about me and this show. Uh, Keith, thank you very much for that. Um, one of the things he talked about uh, was our Kings fan feedback show every Friday, and I did want to put a couple things out there as far as feedback with fans. Um, I'm going to be recording our Friday show early Friday morning. So if you want to get an email in for that show, and maybe you're somebody that waits kind of till the last second, uh, don't do that because I won't be able to read it on the show. So uh, if you want to send an email, if you want to talk about what's going on with the LA Kings right now, if you want to talk about the wrap up of that seven game road trip, anything we've talked about or anything on your mind, Get your emails in early for the Kings fan feedback show. And also, I will be out at the Kings home opener on Thursday against the Sharks. Uh, if you guys want to meet up with me, I love doing that when I go out to games. Uh, send me an email or reach out on social media. And I uh, would definitely love to say hi and, uh, and say thanks for being a supporter of the show out at the Kings home opener coming up this Thursday. Um, so... If you want to send an email to reach out for any reason, the email address is lockedoneddy at gmail.com, uh, E-D-D-I-E, and you can always leave your comments in the YouTube episode as well. Uh, we would love you to stay interactive with us on social media. Follow us on X, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at Locked On LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you for listening and watching this episode of Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. Hopefully we see a big Kings uh, win tonight in Las Vegas. And as always, Go Kings Go!